All right. I'm going to be reading from 1 Peter, chapter 5. So if you're using the uh, few Bibles, this is one of the few Bibles right here. ASV. That will be uh, 1016, page 1016. This is a good piece to read, right here. How about that? All right. I'm going to be reading from 1 Peter chapter 5. And I'm going to start in verse number 6, going all the way to verse 11. So that's 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, going all the way to 11. Let's read. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal <coughs> glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. If we are to pull all of the commands out of here, God tells us to, in his word, he tells us to humble ourselves. Uh, to cast all our burdens on him, to, to be watchful because we have a, an enemy. And then he says, resist Satan, stand firm in your faith. And then Peter says this, he says, man, if you're a saint, you are going to suffer. And then he makes it even more personal when he says, and you are going to suffer. And so when we gather here on Sunday, what, what we're saying is, yes, we believe that. We believe what God says. But at the same time, what we're saying is that we believe that God is in control. We believe that the mighty hand of God is upon the fires of our life. The mighty hand of God is upon the fires in our lives, meaning he is controlling what we're going through, what season that we find ourselves in, and we can trust him. What we're saying is that we believe that God has transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. That he loves us and is with us. And then we also believe that we will suffer, but we believe what the text says. It says he will restore us. He will confirm us. He will strengthen us and establish us. And so what we're saying here this morning, if we're coming in here and we know Christ, what we're saying is that, man, we believe all of this to be true. And, and all of the songs that we're going to sing and the prayers that we're going to pray and the reading of the scripture that we're going to do in a little bit and the, the preaching of the word that we're going to hear from the speaker today, what we're saying is that all of that is a part of God, us saying, yes, we believe you, God. Yes, have your way with me this morning. Amen? Have your way with me. We believe all this to be true. If we believe that we have an enemy, we have to believe that we have a God who is in control of the fires of our life. His mighty hand is on our lives. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are a loving God and that you sent Jesus Christ, the faithful one. And Jesus Christ sent his, the spirit to comfort us. For some of us, we need to be restored. We need some confirmation. We need to be strengthened. Lord, have your way with us this morning during this service. Do all that you plan on doing this morning. Walk with us through this week. Convict us. Help us to take off our self-appointed crowns and bow the knee to you, the true king. Not just in word, but also in deed, in our life. I pray you be with the speaker this morning as well, as we're hearing about missions in France. That we would be so convicted from what is going on over there that we would understand that the God of France is also the God of Fitchburg as well. I pray that you would open some eyes to your glory this morning. I pray for our family and friends who do not know you. I thank you that we know you. Be in this service this morning. I call this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 